Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro here. I'm a little behind on the news, do apologize. I'm just now feeling better, so let's get into it. We've got the iPhone 12 mini, more details on the 2020 lineup, the iPhone 9 and the final details there from Mark Gurman, iOS 14 and the device compatibility list, which is looking really, really good. Also some unreleased Apple products, including their own custom built wireless charger that's not air power and the Galaxy S20 Ultra final design and leaks. So plenty to talk about here. And I actually just got back from an unreleased Tesla product event and I had a chance to sit down with their engineers, even talked a little bit about our case with them. That was super interesting to get some insight from people that have been in the industry for quite some time and a completely different one. But um, I just wanted to update you. We got our prototypes in. We're gonna be doing the drop test here very, very soon and they're gorgeous. The fit is great. Not the final finishes or the materials or texture, so disregard that, but I cannot wait to get these to you. In fact, I like the cases so much, I actually switched to a 5.8 iPhone 11 Pro just because of how amazing it feels to hold your device with one hand finally. And this case allows you to do that more comfortably than any other that I found. But okay, I'd like to start with a custom housing I did on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which resembles the iPhone 12 and the iPad Pro-like design with a slab design, glass on the back, and still that iPad Pro look. It looks really cool. This took about four hours to swap. If you want links on that, I'll have them down below in the description. Now, as for using a square device, I actually measured it with calipers. It's literally the exact same width as the current iPhone, but it doesn't feel that way. Apple actually hides the thickness very, very ingeniously with a curved design. So there's a reason they don't do squared. And if they do go to squared, I hope that they shrink the bezels and make the device as compact as possible, but it works. It's very aesthetic. It looks very cool. It's just good luck finding a case for this squared border on an iPhone. And the smaller it gets, of course, the more comfortable it is. Do check that out down below. So let's first go to a report by Ming-Chi Ko, who details several new products coming to the Apple lineup in the first half of 2020, could possibly be announced at the upcoming spring event, which is likely to take place in March. So first off, he's mentioning that Apple will be working on a wireless charger that's smaller than the AirPower Mat, but will be their own brand. So instead of selling you a third-party version, Apple will have their own. And presumably, they needed to have a product like this in order to sell you an iPhone without a port. So it makes sense that they'd be investing in this before 2021 when that's likely to happen. Whether or not this will come with the new iPhone, we don't know, unlikely, but it will be sold as a standalone accessory as far as we know. He also says AirTags or the Tile competitor will be released in the first half of 2020. So that's very likely coming at the spring event. We've heard a lot about those. They're gonna take on Tile, never lose a single product again, and this will be integrated with the ultra wideband chip in iPhone. So you'll be able to track those items within a few feet, even within a foot indoors, which is the best part. Also, Apple over-ear headphones are still happening. Details are very scarce. We don't know anything about them, but they will happen in the first half of 2020. He also did mention that a new iPad Pro, the 2020 version is coming, as well as the MacBook Pro 13 inch with scissor switch keys. And along with those iPad rumors, Digitimes is reporting that Apple will be releasing their first ever smart keyboard that's backlit and also includes scissor switch keys for the upcoming iPad Pros. And Kuo mentions that the iPhone 9 production will most likely be affected by the coronavirus happening mainly in China right now. In fact, our production of our case is also being affected, so we're being pushed back by five to 10 days. So pre-orders will stay on the 20th, but when we ship will be around the end of March, early April at this point. Also, Kuo is reporting that Apple is working on an iPhone for 2021, which will be the follow-up to the iPhone 9, likely the iPhone 9 Plus. It'll be an LCD display, it'll have Touch ID, but not in the home button because it won't have one in the power button on the side. Apparently it'll be a capacitive design, an all new Touch ID solution that we've never seen on any iPhone. And this is an iPhone that's LCD 5.5 or 6.1 inch display. So not supposed to be super premium, just a different way that Apple is approaching this budget or mid tier iPhone solution. And Let's Go Digital just wrote an extensive report on the 2020 iPhones, starting with an iPhone 12 mini. So this is the 5.4 inch iPhone we've been hearing so much about. They're guessing it'll be called the 12 mini, but they're saying don't quote us on that. And they went into detail on the design aesthetics of this device saying it will feature an iPad Pro like design, but it'll still have 2.5D glass, which is actually exactly what's happening here. The glass still curves into the side. It looks a bit strange, but I feel like Apple's implementation will of course be cleaner. It does work, it gives it that bubbly appearance that we showed you earlier in renders. 
and if done well, it could look actually really good. In that report, they mentioned that the notch will stay. It might be getting smaller, but it will not be getting removed. Previously, they actually were on record saying that the 6.7 inch would not have a notch. It would have Touch ID built in. Now they're saying they're pushing that back for 2021 because the technology has not matured and Apple is not able to place Touch ID into the display just yet, and they will not be removing the notch. So that's sticking around for yet another year. And the most interesting detail of their report is they're saying a 120 hertz display is a very real possibility for all four new iPhones coming out in the fall, not the iPhone 9 being released in March. So with Samsung, OnePlus, and so many other companies adopting this display, you'd expect Apple to hop on that train pretty soon. The technology is available. Battery technology is fairly good. If they can somehow combine them and still maintain a decent battery life, I mean, I'm all in. And what would happen if you combined a cyber truck with an iPhone? You'd get the cyber phone. Caviar, which makes extravagant, very expensive iPhones, has made this custom version, which really, really gets you thinking why. Uh, it seems to ruin the experience completely comfort wise, but if you want your phone to look like Elon Musk just designed it, it's available. From the same blog, iPhone Soft, that brought you details on iOS 13, they're now bringing us details on iOS 14 and which devices it'll support. Some very good news here. They're saying that iPhone wise, every single iPhone that currently supports iOS 13 is overwhelmingly likely to support iOS 14 as well. They're saying the SE and 6S will be supported, but within the next few months, Apple will be considering and evaluating whether or not they should proceed with running iOS 14 on these older devices. I say they're perfectly capable of it. They're running iOS 13 right now very smoothly, and I'd like to see them continue support. In fact, it's amazing just how much Apple supports older devices. They just launched iOS 12.3.5 on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, 5S as well, and that's just crazy how old those devices are, yet Apple continues to support them with the latest security fixes. By the way, if you wanted to see what our case would look like on those older devices, it works. It's not super pleasant, and because of how much demand we're getting, we're likely to develop cases for those just a few months after launch. It's, it's so hectic right now. You guys have no idea. We have so much to take care of. So you could use those on older devices. They won't look great. The camera is still working, not obstructed, but yeah, just so you know. On the iPad side, the iPad mini 4 and Air 2 are apparently getting axed for iOS 14. These are A8 and A8X devices, so getting a little long in the tooth. Those make sense. I would like to see the SE and 6S stay. And we've got our first look at emojis, 117 of them coming to a future beta version of iOS, likely iOS 14. And in that preview, we've got a disguised face, we've got an Italian hand, ninjas, Santa Claus, a bunch of new animals, anatomically correct human parts, and a bunch of new food items. And also found this interesting. The navy blue iPhone 12 Pro color that we rendered up for your viewing pleasure, apparently Max Weinbach's source said it's almost 100% accurate and true to the real thing we'll be seeing later this year in September. So keep an eye out. It might be this dark midnight navy blue, and it's almost purplish, but this would look so good on Apple's upcoming iPhone. And further details that Apple continues to work on Touch ID, likely grooming it until they bring it back to iPhones starting in 2021. So this patent details an active area across the span of a display where you can scan your fingerprints pretty much anywhere on the surface area, which, which would make future iPhones way more useful than having to press your finger in just one area the entire time. And another big reason why Apple should bring back Touch ID to the iPhone, so an issue brought up by 9to5Mac, a lot of users in China right now have to remove their mask to use Face ID. Of course, you can use a passcode, but doing that every single time can get annoying. Having the option to have Touch ID or Face ID, given the circumstances, no matter where you are, what you're doing, would obviously be the best solution here. And Mark German is reporting on the upcoming low-cost iPhone, which is coming out in March. Production is to begin in February. This is, of course, the iPhone 9 with the 4.7-inch display. It'll look exactly like the iPhone 8. According to the article, it'll have an Apple A13 processor, so you'll be getting quite a value, quite a punch in performance on this cheaper iPhone. We're expecting it to cost about $399, maybe $449, but definitely no more than that for what they're offering. And it's, of course, going to keep Touch ID, likely Generation 2 from the iPhone 8. 
This phone will help Apple boost its market share in areas where people really can't afford expensive phones, namely India, where their current market share is 2%. And Bloomberg is also reporting that Apple is boosting production of the Apple A13 in general because the iPhone 11 and 11 Pros are doing so well, namely in China. Okay, and let's talk about the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. I will be at this event, I will be reporting on that, so stay tuned. But the final design has leaked via 91 mobiles and it's not so bad. It aligns all of the lenses, looks a lot more uniform than I thought. It does say space zoom on the lens, and this is for the 100 times zoom with the, of course, telescope zoom that they do have inside. Coupled with digital zoom, you'll pretty much have a telescope in your pocket. And Max Weinweg says that'll be very subtle. It won't be as obvious as we're making it here. There will apparently be four colors at launch, a pink, a blue, a gray, and a black. And the prices will not be cheap. Max Weinbeck is reporting that the S20 Ultra will be about 1,450 US dollars. And the final specs, pretty much everything you want to know about these devices is out. I'm sure Samsung isn't too happy about that. This is even even worse than the iPhone 11 Pro last year. The design, the colors, everything has leaked about these devices. So what'll be left for them to announce at this event other than the Galaxy Z Flip, which has also leaked. This will be about 1450 US dollars, still very expensive. Pretty much their take on the Motorola Razr clamshell design. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. A general update, latest leaks, what's going on. Now, I do wanna say thanks so much for the support, guys. We're finally almost here, and yet again, we've been delayed by just a little, but pre-orders still happening on February 20th. And the latest news is I've decided to add Frosted to every single device. I don't know if we'll make launch with that one, but it'll be happening probably no longer than a month after launch. So stay tuned for Frosted cases on all. It's seriously my favorite. Just that feeling of that iPhone map back with your borders and being able to grip your phone so comfortably. I made the case that I couldn't find anywhere else and I'll be sharing it with you soon. Thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for more. Peace.